We are Channel 37 here at Bifaco Modular Day in beautiful Barcelona. I'm here with uh, Martin from Rebel Technologies. Thank you for speaking with me, Martin. No, it's a pleasure. So you have some exciting projects happening right now. Yeah, the well, there's always, there's always a pipeline of projects. And uh, recently we've uh, released the, uh, the Witch, which I'm very excited about. I'm very pleased with how it's come together and the playability of it. Mm. And, uh, and as a showcase of uh, a lot of the work that we've done here, it's gone into it. Yeah, yeah so with the Witch, it's, um, from my understanding of it at least, it's um, this really unique experience of collaborating between like, the interacting with programming, um, a really uh, the possibility of having a standalone polyphonic instrument and um, playing it as well. So you're trying to connect many worlds with it. Is that correct? Yeah, that is correct, and that and that kind of makes it a bit of a difficult uh, uh, project to explain because it's got many different aspects to it. But at the core of it, it's a very playable polyphonic synth. Mm -hmm. That's just a lot of fun to 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 use, mm -hmm. and that can be used in different ways. So that was one of the design goals, to have something that can be CV controlled, play with the MIDI controller, or just play it on, on its own mm -hmm. in a very small, compact format. Yeah. yeah, interesting. The fact that it's programmable, or that you uh, can load different programs on it, mm -hmm. uh, I guess is more meant as a bonus for this particular device, that okay. you've got the factory patches, but then if you want to dig deeper, you can also find this world of all the patches to explore. Mm -hmm. It could also, I see it as a pathway for um, people who are very interested in programming getting into modular mm -hmm. or music in Absolutely, general. Absolutely, yeah. yeah. And I think it can be that kind of gateway drug for both directions. Yeah, so. exactly. <laughs> the witch is a gateway drug for it, it sure. Could be, it could unleash some, some serious addiction Some kind problems. of black magic, yeah. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> So, um, what was your introduction actually to the modular world and music in general? Yeah, so it uh, started about 12 years ago, I think, and I was, I was exploring, I was playing around with making, with electronic music production mm -hmm. and getting, felt very sort of hemmed in by the DAW sort of doing things in the box, even yeah. though it's kind of endless possibilities, you can play, with, I played a lot with Native Instruments Reactor, it's amazing, right? You can do yeah. anything. But yeah, you always have true. this, like, it's, it's like you're having to do things through uh, with, with the mouse, right? You mm -hmm. have, it's like having like a, I don't know, like a, a, a single finger to control <laughs> everything with. You can control the world, but you're mm -hmm. only allowed, allowed to do it with a single finger at mm -hmm. a time. You know? So then I started getting into MIDI controllers, but then you have all these setup problems and so on. Mm -hmm. Realized that with modular synthesizers, I could innovate on the little bits that I wanted to innovate in, which I felt was lacking, mm -hmm. which or which I felt which I wanted to explore mm -hmm. without having to design a full synthesizer because I could get those modules from elsewhere and that's how it all started for me. Okay. What are you most interested in when it comes to your own creations and uh, what avenues do you want to explore in the modular world? Yeah, it's. Uh, I think when I started out, I was kind of focused that I wanted to do to explore certain things, certain algorithmic approaches. Over the years, the list is just getting longer yeah. and longer. Like uh, for every project that I feel I managed to complete, it unlocks another 10 that I would like to explore. So, mm -hmm. so yeah, I keep this running sort of uh, list of uh, mm -hmm. things to explore further, but mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Um, I mean, it's endless, isn't it? Yeah, you can just get, go deeper and deeper. Deeper and deeper, and once you start to going deeper into one thing, it opens up in, into another new ten directions. Yeah, it's no? very much like a branch, it's like the roots of a tree. Like the of. roots of a tree, very fractal. No? Yeah. yeah, so you explained your fascina fascination with um, the algorithmic uh, realm, mm. and so you explored that a lot in your series of Euclidean sequencers. Yeah, right? that's right, yeah. It's like the relationship between maths and, and music, which is often talked about, right? Yeah. That, uh, I mean, you can, you can have many different takes on it, but maybe mathematics is the human brain's way of understanding the universe. Mm. And uh, music is an expression of how we understand the universe mm. um, or something like that. <laughs> I really like that idea. So, the, so then you can look at how, where they intersect. And with the Euclidean rhythms, it's a very... It's a very nice fit between uh, rhythms that appear in uh, traditional music and that mm -hmm. we've been 
finding, exploring, and and uh, unearthing maybe for mm. uh, hundreds, if not thousands, of years, and it matches very nicely with a very simple mathematical algorithm. Mm -hmm. And so that's a nice, inter uh, nice. Uh, so yeah, I guess so. With the Clinton series, it's kind of also looking at how a modular synthesizer is really an analog computer. So yeah. patching is programming, mm -hmm. but it's also compositional. Yeah. So yeah, I think that's th those intersecting parts there are very interesting to me. Yeah, it's the, it, a lot of uh, what you're you're describing. It just sounds like um, to me a keen interest in the intersection of all of these different sort of phenomena. Yeah, and they're, of course they're interesting on their own. Yeah. Um, I studied maths and. Mm -hmm. And it's it's a super interesting field that you really have to dedicate yourself to. I think music is very similar. I agree. You yeah, have to give yourself experience. up to it, right? Yeah. You, if you do it halfway, you yeah, mm -hmm. you're not gonna get halfway to your goals probably. Mm -hmm. um, but yeah, where they where they intersect and meet is is uh, is interesting, and uh, and yeah, there's a lot there's a lot still to explore there. Mm -hmm. Also, I mean, there's also, I, I listen to a lot of different music and from jazz to more improv stuff and very composed stuff. Mm -hmm. And you kind of wonder, like, these, I've seen some really amazing live modular sets from people who, I don't know, who just seem to uh, bring together the performative and the compositional yeah. uh, in one. So there's still a freedom for improvisation. Uh, there's it. the freedom for the improvisation in a very what can be a sometimes a very simple uh, but effective composition, or sometimes and the arranging as well. It all happens yeah. at the same time. Mm -hmm. So I like this idea of a of a patch, basically. A bit modular, also you build up your own instrument. Yeah, that's so true. So the way the way you put it together and the way you patch it is in a way a compositional process, isn't it? Yeah, I mean it, it's definitely a compositional process, and it's evident in that. I mean, we we've had, for example, a friend uh, Stein over to our house, and his approach to patching uh, the same modular it came up with sounds that we've never encountered before. Oh, in your it's system. a signature, and every time you patch, it's really um, it's a reflection of your own kind of personal creative brand. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah, yeah. It's it's like yeah, you could be writing it on sheet uh, sheet music mm -hmm. on a paper, I guess. Yeah. Um, or you could be writing it on the, with patch cables in a modular synthesizer. Absolutely, mm -hmm. yeah. And then with, again, with the, coming back to the, the programming side, a lot of people feel that well, programming is 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 such a different expression from music. But you're essentially doing the same thing as you are with the patching. You're making these connections. You're making these signal flows. Mm -hmm. So, yeah, I like to bring these things together. Yeah, interesting. Yeah, that's really fascinating for me. Mm. It's a there. It's just different languages, but similar approaches. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. There's a um, a sort of futuristic quality to the Owl series. At least I perceive it as such. Um, do you perceive it in that way, and how do you feel that it fits into the future? Yeah, I think that's interesting because it's it's. Uh, We've been doing this for, I've been doing the OWL stuff since uh, 10 years now, and uh, it doesn't feel that, that new an approach to me anymore. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, and it's getting more traction in different forms, in, uh, in modular and, and elsewhere, this, uh, this approach. Um, yes, I'm not really sure about futuristic. I, I think, uh, to me, it's about community building, and if you can, if from that community you can build the future, that's amazing. Mm -hmm. There's also an element uh, of uh, looking backwards. There's a lot of amazing stuff that's been done in, in digital signal processing and algorithm development uh, over, over the several decades. And a lot of like the really nice patches come up from algor algorithms from the 70s and mm -hmm. from, from even further back that you can almost be an archaeologist and find these things and bring them into a modern format. Okay. So there's both, there's, yeah, retro-futurism. <laughs> yeah, retro-futurism, interesting. Yeah, it seems like um, a general consensus is that there's these ideas that were explored in the 70s that were really, really solid and unique, and it's um, giving, like, life or new uh, rebirth of those ideas in many ways. And yeah, some of the can be expressed too. in a different way, I guess. Yeah. And, then, and then having this fusion of... Uh, 
of tools. Yeah. yeah. And for the for the future, I um, um, yeah, I'm, um, what's I guess what people think of as uh, modern things for a while, granular synthesis was the future. Hmm. Now oh, it's now it's more of a mainstay thing. Then uh, we there was a lot of development in the in physical modeling and mm. stuff again that's kind of it's all becomes part of the musical arsenal of tools that you can have at your disposal mm -hmm. and of course with the other rack you slot them in one next to another mm -hmm. and you might get unexpected results maybe that's the future yeah accepting chaos yes, yes. okay i'm all for that <laughs> yeah so you have just moved to barcelona and are collaborating uh, quite intensely with uh, bafaco has this collaboration changed at all the way that you think or work? And uh, yeah, tell me a little bit more about your experience there. Yeah, so on the whole, the experience has been really good, really nice experience. And I uh, moved here with uh, my family two and a half years ago now, mm. so before all of this with COVID and everything. And I uh, feel really blessed to be here uh, uh, in. Um, in, uh, I mean, Lon I, I lived in London before we lived there for many years, and it's also an amazing place. But I'm glad we didn't do lockdown in London, to be honest. <laughs> <laughs> I can imagine. And uh, and apart from that, yeah. So Bifaco, they've been good friends of mine for for many years. I've been going to the workshops in London when they were coming there regularly. Then uh, striking up this friendship and. Uh, yeah, so working together with them has been a very natural thing and a very natural process. Um, and uh, they have, they're doing really well. They they got a really strong set of products and they got a really great team mm -hmm. here in Barcelona that uh, I'm lucky to be able to, uh, to uh, piggyback a bit on that. Mm -hmm. So now they do some of my production and distribution mm -hmm. and... Uh, and it gives me more space. And also, in developing products now, um, I've got I get much more feedback, for better or worse. Of course, yeah. it's better. The yeah. feedback is good, but, but it's it not always what you, <laughs> it can be hard, right? It's not always what you want to hear. Of course, <laughs> I know. But the end result ends up being so much better. Yeah. So uh, yeah, I just wish there was more time in the day so we could do more projects. We've, we, as I said, there's always a pipeline. Yeah. Um, it's it's uh, it it takes a uh, it's frustrating to some t often to see how long it takes to get uh, product done. Uh, some things I'm still you know pushing to release have been in in uh, development for four, five, six years. You know. Yeah. Um, but I guess they're they're done when they're done. And yeah. Is that difficult because you have um, you have a lot of ideas that you would love to spend more time on? Yeah. Or for another reason, just well, patience. Well, it's, uh, it's the patience. Is the it's it's quite possible that I'm not very good at getting things done. <laughs> uh, <laughs> but also from from a from strictly from a business point of view, you have to finish your products and turn them into products so you can. Mm get them to market before the market has completely changed and the product is irrelevant. So yeah. <laughs> that's the... That's a yeah. significant obstacle. Yeah. But I, um, but I also had the... I, I had some time recently where I worked uh, for more of a, in a day job capacity for someone else outside of your rack mm -hmm. and that's been really good for me to then get the spark back for mm -hmm. really uh, to enjoy what I'm doing mm -hmm. and not just be not just be stressing about getting projects done. Now I can enjoy the process of doing that. Mm. Yeah, I, I definitely relate to that, giving a little bit of space. So mm. it's something uh, yeah. you space for love to grow. Yeah, exactly that. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I think um, Bafaco, from what I know of them, is uh, very concerned with community building, exactly. with outreach and education. Mm. Is that something that also interests you and maybe enticed you into this collaboration? Yeah, it, and and even even from the start, so uh, the the idea from the beginning of Rebel Technology was to be uh, more of a collective. Mm. But um, um, the uh, it's ended up being mostly me just uh, <laughs> doing the product development, and it's uh, uh, whereas with the, with Bifaco they've been building up this uh, DIY community not just here in Barcelona, but. Uh, 
all around Europe. They've been traveling mm. with their bags full of soldering irons and <laughs> kits, and they've been doing this year for this thing for years. Mm -hmm. And they've created basically they've seeded the ground in in all these different places yeah. for communities to grow up, which are now the communities that are nourishing them. So yeah, kind of creating an army of uh, an army of soldering, <laughs> iron wielding uh, synth nerds. Yeah. It's amazing. Well, <laughs> now recent in recent years when they've grown to, to, to as a as a company. They now have these people to join that, mm -hmm. uh, that are well trained and using soldiering eyes, this army of soldiers. Yeah, it's yeah. dangerous. <laughs> Dumbledore's army. <laughs> yeah. yeah, we should all be yeah. very afraid. Very afraid. <laughs> I really appreciated speaking with you. Thank you for sharing I your I enjoyed experience. it very much, yeah. Thanks. Thank you. Bye.